Expedition 16 Commander Peggy Whitson, home at last. Welcome home, Peggy. Um, sort of an unexpected way to come home, the ballistic landing. Uh, if you can, in as much detail as you would care to, uh, describe uh, what happened on board the TMA-11 and uh, what your feelings were as you headed for basically a shorter target than uh, we had expected you to land at. Well, uh, the immediately or shortly after Resilinia, we uh, switched automatically to the ballistic mode, which meant that we were uh, going to be spinning up to eight Gs and coming in in a steeper descent. Um, and I saw 8.2 Gs on the on the meter, and uh, it was a pretty pretty dramatic. Gravity's not really my friend right now, and 8 Gs was especially not my friend, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, it, it didn't last too long. Um, you know, re-entry or you know, shoot deploy was nominal, and uh, impact. Uh, I guess maybe because I'd heard so many stories, wasn't quite as bad as I was expecting. But Resdalinia was a little more dramatic than I was expecting. Resdalinia is the separation of the modules, so uh, it was great. Um, Yuri's a great Soyuz commander, and he did a great job throughout the entire time. Uh, making sure that we were, uh, you know, on the procedures and everything happened uh, appropriately. And so I was real proud of him. Glad to work with him on that. The search and recovery forces, um, they, they rehearse this quite often. Uh, it's uh, not exactly commonplace, but it's not old hat to them either. And they were right on the scene. What were your thoughts as the capsule, as you opened the hatch to the capsule and they got you all out back on... Home sweet home earth. It wasn't the search and rescue who got us out of the capsule. Uh, it was uh, just some guys that had seen it and drove in. You know, they probably uh, saw the fire and drove in toward the scene. And um, at at the scene, they uh, Yuri got out by himself before anyone had arrived. And then uh, by the time Soyan and I were trying to get out, uh, they the fellows that came out to meet us helped us out so it worked out real well and we just waited until the search and rescue team uh, arrived homecoming by the local Kazakh uh, welcoming committee Peggy uh, around the world many are calling your half year in space uh, the mother of all expeditions uh, do you view it that way you know it's tough right now obviously to put it all in perspective but the significance uh, has got to be just tremendous when, when you when you get a moment to look back on what you accomplished. Well, I think I was really lucky to be in a place and at a time when so many different activities were going on. The uh, every single one of the, our challenges, we had some very challenging EVAs, some very challenging robotics. Uh, you know, ATV arrival, first time for that vehicle. And then you know, just throw it in among that, uh, you know, two progresses and three shuttles with many EVAs to support there as well. It, it's been, couldn't ask for anything more. It was great. What were your feelings, uh, nostalgia perhaps, uh, as you undocked from the space station and had a chance in the Soyuz uh, to look back at the place that had been your home for the past six months? Well, it's interesting, you know, I'd rather actually undock from the shuttle because you get to see more of the station as you're backing away. Uh, in the Soyuz, you really only get to see on the video camera and then just part of the structure out the windows uh, because we're backing off at an angle such that not much of the structure is visible. So in that regard, I, I think I was a little disappointed that you couldn't see more of, a, of the station as we left. But... Uh, at, at Resdalini, I was waving bye to the station, or excuse me, at, at uh, Resdalini, when we separated, I was waving at the station. So. When, when you finally got out of the capsule, uh, any special thoughts, the smell of fresh air, uh, just to look at the soil again, the sky from that perspective? Well, there was a little bit of a burning odor. <laughs> so, uh, but what was nice was feeling the wind on my face and uh, and actually I heard some birds uh, so that was uh, kind of surprising. 
Peggy, what do you think uh, the highest point of the expedition was and perhaps the lowest or darkest moment? Well, uh, the highest point, I think, was uh, successfully completing all the EVAs to move Node 2 into position. Um, the VGA R&R &R was uh, also, you know, uh, I think very important for us at that particular point in time. You know, it would have been difficult for us to accept another module without the power capability provided by that. So those were both, I would think, you know, the high points of the mission. Uh, low points, uh, you know, hard to have any, but uh, Dan Swamp passed away. For you, Peggy Whitson, Iowa farm girl, now home, the all-time record holder for most days in space by a, an American astronaut in history. Uh, it's an amazing feat, uh, a, a matter of serendipity or just hard work, a combination of both, being in the right place at the right time? Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, I, I've always said I'm not the, the the sharpest tool in the shed, but, <laughs> but uh, I, I am able to work real hard, so I think that helped get me where I, where I was able to do this mission. Welcome home, Peggy. Thank you very much.